Thank you for being here at Considering Community Birth. This presentation will pose questions and offer answers for those considering birthing at home or at a birth center with midwives. As an aside, the photos that you'll see throughout this presentation were all captured at home births that I attended. First off, I'd love to say thank you to Blossom Birth for inviting me to present on this topic. Blossom Birth is located in Palo Alto, California. Their mission is to connect new and expectant families with services, resources, and support for a healthy, informed, and confident pregnancy and parenting journey. And who am I to be sharing this info? My name is Morgan West. I am a California licensed midwife and a nationally certified professional midwife working out of the Bay Area, California in my practice, Hummingbird Midwifery. At the moment of this presentation, it is April 2020 and we are in the throes of a pandemic. The initial inspiration for this presentation was to provide some basic information for birthing families who are now feeling uncertain about their plans for hospital birth and might be considering birthing with a midwife in the community. I will not be speaking more to the specifics of COVID-19, given that each week new data, recommendations, and protocols are being published, and the circumstances will likely continue to change in the coming months. Instead, I will focus on midwifery care in the community setting and how, at any time, pandemic or not, exploring your options for a birth at home or at a birth center with midwives is well worth it. Let's start by asking what drives families to seek out midwifery care and plan for a community birth. You likely have some motivations at this moment, and here are some of the big ones that I come across in my practice. In my estimation, the most important and impactful reason is that families want and know they deserve a care provider who trusts in their innate capacity to birth. They want a care provider who believes that birth is safe and also believes that a family's experience of birth is worth optimizing. When I consider a birth, I see it not just as the birth of a new human, your baby, but also the birth of parents and an entirely new family unit. An empowered birth leads to a connected family who has a sense of confidence and strength from the beginning. If we consider the ways that humans have come into the world for centuries, it is at the hands of midwives. We know that our bodies are built with an incredible wisdom and resilience. Many families seek midwifery care to experience the rawness and fullness of this embodied wisdom as it presents itself through birth. By creating an environment where one is safe to embody their full human experience, may it be serenity and quiet, or the channeling of huge animalistic roars, or sweet, tender, sensual connection with a loved partner, we set the foundation for birth to unfold naturally and with empowerment. Not to say that birth is ever easy, but a family who builds a relationship with a provider who they trust and know is better equipped to move through the challenging moments of labor and birth when they come. Families often find midwifery care with a sense of trust in their bodies and their birthing ability already established, even if fears and other thoughts also populate their mental space. In a midwifery care relationship, we build upon this trust and inner knowing as we navigate and explore the fears. We remain watchful and diligent to protect the health of the mom and babe, but also clear away unnecessary stress and gripping to what ifs knowing that those won't do much to support a healthy birth. When committing to laboring in a community setting, away from pharmaceutical pain management, families are met with the challenge and triumph of being with the intensity of labor. As midwives, our toolbox is expansive. We get creative with bodies, movement, touch, breath, water therapy, homeopathy, music, visualization, herbs, and meditation. And as a birth team, we must step up to provide the birthing person with our collective confidence and trust in their ability. I often use the analogy of running a marathon. 
If you are surrounded by people who continually offer you an out from the pain and intensity of that work and still promise the same end goal of crossing the finish line, it would seem silly not to take it. But if your supporters know that the way you meet this intensity will inform the rest of your parenting life and fill you with a gratification and confidence beyond what many people get to ever experience, and they're also there to remind you of simple truths like, you are strong and capable, you will make it through this, there is no way this will last forever, each step is bringing you closer to the end, I'm here with you. That is what it takes to complete the marathon of birth. Families seeking a midwife want to be an active participant in their care. They often oppose what has turned into standard maternity care, which mostly relies on hospitals and OBs to perform health care to us rather than protect and empower our own right to decide what happens to our bodies and babies. Even using the word deliver to describe the action of an OB towards a birthing person and baby display how the power is taken away from the two most essential beings in the birth. Folks come to midwifery care to responsibly return to the roots of humanity and the truth that we are all birthed and we are capable of birthing. They often seek the undisturbed moments following a birth where they get to meet their baby for the first time with quiet, respectful, watchful, non-intrusive providers who will honor the first moments of a baby's experience on this planet rather than invade it. I would boil this list of motivations down to the belief that pregnancy and birth are far more than medical events. By seeking midwifery care and planning community births, a family has the opportunity to be cared for by people who value this truth just as much as they do and who will make space for the many dimensions of their experience to be felt, witnessed, and honored. So if we get into the logistics of midwifery care, midwifery care is maternity care, health care for the pregnant population. The standard prenatal care that you might get with an OB, you can also receive through a midwife. We assess mothers and babies' health and well-being in many of the same ways that are used in obstetric care. We use Dopplers and fetoscopes to listen to the baby's heartbeat. We track the mother's health data like weight and blood pressure. We save folks a trip to the lab by drawing blood work and collecting other standard tests in pregnancy at our visits. We order ultrasounds at the appropriate times, and we assess the growth of the baby by doing fundal heights and feeling the baby's size and position with our hands at every visit. While midwifery care offers the same assessments as one would get in their prenatal care elsewhere, midwifery care offers much more. We educate and discuss at length what testing options and procedures are available in standard prenatal care, which includes discussing the benefits, risks, and alternatives to these. This is the only way a family can make a true informed decision when they understand why we are interested in gathering information, how said information might change our course of action, and if there are any other ways that fit the family's needs to get this information. This way, the family can choose what is most appropriate for them. We educate on how to use testing and technology in an evidence-based and responsible manner and acknowledge the family as the primary decision maker with us as both advisor and advocate. We also question standard hospital practices and uses of technology that are not evidence-based, such as immediate cord cutting, necessitating IVs and labor, the use of continuous fetal monitoring, all of which have been disproven as necessary for a low-risk population. And instead, we offer a physiologic approach to these matters when it's appropriate. Given the extra care you receive with a midwife, the structure of your visits looks quite different. You will likely spend an hour with your midwife each time you see them, 
which allows time for the clinical assessments and lots more time for discussions, education, and questions. In this time, we build a relationship and a foundation of trust. A deepening relationship is possible given that you are cared for by the same midwife or few midwives through the entirety of your pregnancy and know that these same people will be at your birth. As midwives, we want your care to fit your values and needs, and we acknowledge that care will look different for each family. We are interested in hearing about your physical experience of pregnancy, but also what is happening emotionally, spiritually, in your relationships, and your family constellation. We acknowledge the whole pregnant person and all the contributing factors to their well-being. We strive to have cultural humility and build cultural competency so that we can care for a diverse client population. There is a midwife for every family, and we bring our whole selves into a care relationship. Another way midwifery care looks different is that we continue to care for the mom and baby together through six weeks postpartum. In standard OB care, as soon as the baby is born, they leave the responsibility of the OB and enter into pediatric care. This means the mom and babe are cared for by different practitioners who have very little experience with the other. This way of caring for a mom and babe does not acknowledge the fact that they are very much still a unit for months after the birth, for bonding, for breastfeeding, For healing and building stable attachments, they need to be cared for together. A midwife will care for the well mom and well babe for six weeks and attend to all of these matters. While an OB will only see a mom once or maybe twice after delivery, a midwife will see the mom babe unit at least five times in the first six weeks. Another benefit this allows is that the family will stay home for a nesting period. Uh, for better healing and bonding, and won't need to leave the home for their health care. The word midwife has Germanic roots, and if we break it down, it translates to mean with woman. Our main tasks are to be present and watchful in witnessing the birthing person so that they are safe and supported. In essence, to be with them as a protector and sometimes guide. In the most recent years, there have been systems created to educate and license midwives to create a more reliable standard in terms of what midwives are trained and skilled to do. In the United States, midwives can train in a few different ways, and each state decides how their midwives should be licensed and which kind of midwives can legally practice. The simplest way to think about the different kinds of midwives is by understanding where they are trained. Some midwives choose to train in the community setting, and other midwives choose to train in hospital. Midwives trained in the community setting are called Certified Professional Midwives, or CPMs. These midwives will be enrolled in a midwifery school and concurrently form an apprenticeship relationship with an already practicing midwife to gain their clinical skills. This path often follows three to six years. Some states, such as California, require that these midwives apply for another layer of licensure that is state-specific and granted by that state's medical board. When a midwife is granted this, they are called a licensed midwife, or LM. These two certifications reflect myself. I am a licensed midwife in California and a CPM nationally. A midwife trained within the hospital is called a Certified Nurse Midwife, or CNM. These midwives were first nurses and then completed additional schooling to support the perinatal population and manage labors in the hospital. There are some CNMs that then create practices to attend community births, though many continue to practice on labor and delivery units and in hospital settings. In states where LMs and CPMs and CNMs are all given rights to practice in the community, they will have the same access to tools, medications, and emergency equipment for birth. CNMs may have the ability to prescribe certain medications when needed prenatally or postpartum, including birth control or antibiotics. 
There are also midwives who choose to work outside of legal licensure structures or whose states possibly don't provide any means for them to practice with a license. Folks sometimes refer to them as lay midwives. Of course, one of the primary questions that comes up when considering home and birth center birth is how do we keep those birthing and their babies safe in the community setting? It is a midwife's job to ensure that the families continuing to plan home or birth center births remain low risk. This means there are certain pre-existing conditions that would contraindicate home birth. Some of these conditions include hypertension, type 1 or 2 diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, etc. Through our assessments of maternal vitals, the milestones of fetal and uterine growth, fetal position, and of course fetal heart rate, we maintain a clientele who is low risk and appropriate for home birth. If our clients develop health complications related to pregnancy, such as preeclampsia, or are found to have twins or a breech babe at the time of birth, these are also reasons why we would plan to be in the hospital for the birth. We offer all of the same standard testing to ensure that mom and babe are well. When it comes to labor, we are accessible to our clients 24-7 and are in contact as labor moves from the early to active stage when we will join the laboring family at home. This is the same time a family would be asked to move to the hospital if that was their birth setting. When we join a laboring family, we diligently monitor the maternal vitals and fetal heart rate to be sure that both are healthy and well and labor is progressing normally. Beyond the tools to measure vitals, we also carry oxygen, fetal resuscitation equipment, pharmaceutical medications to control postpartum bleeding and treat hemorrhage, IVs and fluids, antibiotics, and other basic healthcare equipment. We are trained in emergency response to complications in labor and birth and recertify a neonatal resuscitation every two years. If at any point in a labor our assessments display a higher level of care is needed, then we will move locations and continue, continue a labor in the hospital. Given that we are continuously assessing the well-being of mom and babe, these transfers of care are very often non-emergency situations that continue to progress towards a vaginal birth with the support of different tools available in the hospital. Our community statistics show that about 1 in 5 first-time birthers or 1 in 20 folks not birthing their first baby will require extra support available at the hospital. In many countries across the world, the safety of community birth for the low-risk population has been proven, and in the United States, we also see reassuring statistics about the safety of community birth. Our best and most informative data set came from the Midwives Alliance of North America and offers the largest data set on community birth to date. Given that every state has a different legal structure for licensing and regulating midwifery care, the United States maternal health care system is different from many other nations, which makes the data highly contextual. Where there is little access to hospital backup or punitive treatment of families who choose community birth or the inaccessibility of legal midwifery care, birthing at home can carry different risks. In the Bay Area, California, we are lucky to have supportive hospitals where we can ask, access higher levels of care when necessary, as well as legal structures that make midwifery care accessible and safe. Many folks wonder what makes a birth at a birth center different than a birth at home. And the answer to that question is very little. The training of the midwives is the same. The equipment and emergency responses are the same. We clean up at home or at the birth center just the same. Of course, if you're birthing at a birth center, the setting itself is different. You will need to leave your home during your active labor to get to the birth center and pack up to go home within three to six hours of birthing. You will likely be cared for prenatally by a team of multiple midwives and not necessarily know which will be on call when you go into labor. 
There are often slightly stricter protocols on what might require hospital transfer from a birth center or who can access birth at a birth center. Some birth centers will carry what is called nitrous oxide, a form of pain management that is generally not available in homes. A birth center is an especially great option for folks who live quite far from a hospital or who feel unsafe or uncomfortable in their home. And how will you know if you are a good fit for planning a community birth? The first thing to explore are your motivations for accessing midwifery care and your values. What values do you share with midwifery care? Are you ready and willing to make the commitment of being an active participant in your care, educating yourself about testing options along with your midwife's guidance, excited to meet the challenge of a labor without pharmaceutical pain management, are you wanting an undisturbed postpartum to bond and observe the natural newborn responses to being first out of the womb? Um, and most importantly, are you a low-risk candidate in terms of your health and the health of your pregnancy thus far? If you know that planning a community birth is for you, what are your next steps? A great first step will be finding your midwife or midwifery practice. One place to see a large directory of midwives in California is through the California Association of Licensed Midwives uh, webpage, C-A-L-M webpage. In the Bay Area, uh, we also have home birth collectives, the Bay Area Home Birth Collective and the San Francisco Home Birth Collective. These are great places to start. You can certainly ask your friends or community members who have birthed with a midwife about their experience and who their midwife was, and a simple Google search for midwives in your area will also bring lots up. You will be offered an hour-long interview, free of charge, with midwives that you are interested in working with, and this is a great opportunity to share about yourself, what you are looking for, and learn the specifics of this midwife, their practice, experience, and philosophy. As folks grow into their pregnancy and near birth, cultivating presence and mindfulness are amazing tools. Finding comfort in what is simple and true, like the earth beneath your feet and the way your breath moves in and out of your body. I highly recommend childbirth education to gain insight into what to expect and how to cope through challenging moments in a labor. Positive birth stories are another great way to build confidence and learn about the diversity of birth experiences. As you gain more knowledge and wisdom, hopefully you'll be able to drop any tightly held ideas about how birth should be or how it should look that might get in the way of a naturally unfolding birth for yourself. Find your inner calm and remember you can do it. For those of you who decide that birthing at home or a birth center isn't right for you, here are a few alternatives to consider. First, there are midwives who offer concurrent care with an OB practice when it is known that maternal or fetal risk factors will not allow a birth in the community. This looks like double care, but many families benefit greatly from it, especially when they are having a particularly complicated prenatal period. In this care structure, the midwife would become a birth support person similar to a doula once the family reached the hospital. On that note, I would highly recommend doula support. Doulas are trained in supporting laboring people through their labor and birth, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and helping to advocate for the laboring families in places the family didn't know they had choices or where they feel strongly about certain decisions and want support communicating them. Doulas are invaluable and an incredible resource. There are also private midwifery practices built by CNMs that contract to provide their full service in the hospital setting. Many hospitals also have staff midwives, uh, and you can request to be cared for by the staff midwife when you arrive in the hospital. You may not know this practitioner prior to arriving, but you'll know that this person shares your values of a physiologic birth and family-centered care. 
While that was a lot of information, we have truly just scraped the surface. Please do your research and ask good questions. One of my favorite documentaries about birth and community birth is called Why Not Home? You can access this documentary through their website. It is a great way to learn more and get a view into midwifery care and families' decisions to plan births in the community. And to all of you pregnant people, blessings on your birth and all that follows. May you have the support you need, feel held and triumphant throughout your birth journey, and come out on the other side feeling strong and empowered. Thank you so much for being here and be well.